Please rise. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so, saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church in downtown Martinsburg, West Virginia. We are here for a celebration of the resurrection and in thanksgiving for the life of Gilbert B. Miller. I'm the Reverend Ann Weatherholt, and we welcome your presence here today. Family, friends, neighbors, all those who loved Gilbert, whose lives that he touched. I'll be reading the words to the hymns before we sing them so that those who are online can understand what we're, what we're enjoying. Um, singing is not encouraged, but humming is okay, so um, we'll let you kind of figure that out as you go along. The first hymn, morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the rain's new fall sunlit from heaven, like the first dew fall on the first grass. Praise for the sweetness of the wet garden, sprung in completeness where his feet pass. Mine is the sunlight, mine is the morning, born of the one light Eden saw play. Praise with elation, praise every morning God's recreation of the new day.
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Gilbert and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy in the fellowship of all thy saints. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with Gilbert's family and friends in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken, it will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God, we have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Let's read Psalm 39 uh, responsibly by alternating verse. I will start. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. Even as your hand will lead me and your right hand hold me fast, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. A reading from the Revelation of St. John. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, 
Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Remaining seated, I ask you to join with me in saying Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our sequence hymn is one that has a familiar old tune, but some newer words that I thought expressed so well some of the essence of Gilbert's life. Give thanks for life the measure of our days. Mortal, we pass through beauty that decays. Yet sing to God our hope, our love, our praise. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks for those who made their life a light caught from the Christ flame bursting through the night, who touched the truth, who burned for what is right. And for our own, our living and our dead, thanks for the love by which our life is fed, a love not changed by time or death or dread. Give thanks for hope that like the wheat The grain lying in darkness does its life retain in resurrection to grow green again. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me, says Jesus. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am way and truth and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. At this time, we're going to ask you to be seated, and a member of the family will be coming forward to give some remarks. I think I'd better turn this on. It's not as easy anymore. Hello, and thank you all for being here. And since, as I understand it, this is being recorded and broadcasted, um, hello to all of you as well, and thank you for being with us. Um, after I was asked to write and deliver a eulogy, the recurrent advice I got from everyone was to write from the heart, and that's what I've done. But I've learned that the heart sometimes doesn't allow for five-minute summaries of nearly a century of living, particularly the type of life that Gilbert led. I thought it would be a good idea, anyway, to have an accurate understanding of what a eulogy is, so I looked into it. As some of you know, um, the word eulogy is from the Greek eulogia. The eu means well or truth. Uh, the logia means words or text that's combined uh, with praise. So elogia means something that's accurate, something that's true, and something that's combined with praise said about someone who's dear to you. And although good deeds and earthly accolades don't determine the eternal disposition of our lives, another source of Greek translations with which we're all familiar, the Bible, has a lot to say about living that earthly life and the desirability of good fruit, commendable behavior, and a nature that aligns with love. I think we can probably all bring to mind examples of times when we saw dad love. He did, you know, he did this in a lot of different ways. When his older brothers, for instance, were uh, called off to war in World War II, he loved by doing what he thought had to be done to help sustain his family uh, farm during the Great Depression, which didn't end, as you all know, until the end of the war. He did this while he was simultaneously attending High school, and after graduating from Shepherdstown High School, he attended and graduated from Shepherd College. You all know the story. Um, he graduated, and Cornelius McGillicuddy, also known as Connie Mack, uh, signed him to a professional baseball contract to play for what at the time was the Philadelphia Athletic Franchise. He used to talk fondly, didn't he, about his days in Lincoln, Nebraska, and Rocky Mountain, North Carolina playing for those farm teams. In the mid-1980s, a guy by the name of John Fogarty uh, wrote a song, and some of you will remember him as being the driving force behind the forming of the band Creedence Clearwater Revival. And the song was called Center Field. You can see the video, you know, it's on YouTube. You know, you can can still see it. And, And if you are curious about the enthusiasm and the energy that Dad conveyed to us when he talked about those days of his life. Watch the video. 
I don't know how Fogarty managed to do it, but somehow he, another generation captured the essence of that one. These are some lyrics from it. Well, beat the drum and hold the phone. The sun came out today. We're born again. There's new grass on the field. Around in third, I'd, I'm headed for home. It's a brown-eyed, handsome man. Anyone can understand the way I feel. Oh, put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play today. Look at me. I can be center field. He played center field, by the way, when he wasn't pitching when he came back from the majors. I don't know how Fogarty did it, but watch the video. <laughs> After an injury cut his baseball career short, he came back to West Virginia, and by now World War II had ended and legions of GIs were coming back into the workforce. So once again, he loved by doing what he thought he had to do. He went back to work on the farm for a short time. At least one version of Dad's obituary said that he had a good work ethic and suggested maybe that perseverance was part of that mix. No doubt that was formed during the Great Depression that he lived through and also may have had something to do with his German heritage on his mother's side, but there may have been some other factors too. Most people casually acquainted with Dad would say that he had three biological children, Benton, Gary, and Alan, three sons. That, however, would not fit the definition of elogia. It, it wouldn't be true and it wouldn't be accurate. Gilbert had four children, three sons and a daughter, my older sister, Ginger Louise. Ginger was born September 29th, 1951, and she died 15 days later after coming home from the hospital. Not much was known in the 1950s about SIDS, and the tragedy had a profound effect on many, not the least of whom were my mother and father. There weren't any answers. And in this case, love for a child had broken their hearts. I couldn't imagine the pain of losing your first child and, and, and after it had been fully formed and, and come home and, and you know, registered as an entity, someone that's part of your family. And so at one point I asked Dad how he managed to weather that loss. He said he worked often in the orchard and found that helped occupy his mind. That may explain what Dad often said, that he could walk down through the orchard and feel as close to God in a grove of cherry and apple trees as he could in a church building. Years later, he would walk through that same orchard following a terrible motorcycle accident that nearly claimed my younger brother's life. Interestingly to me, history records that during his final earthly days, one of the favorite places of Jesus Christ to meet with his disciples and pray was in an orchard an olive grove outside the walls of Jerusalem by the name of Gethsemane. Sometimes the investment of love can cost a lot, but in some cases it may also provide the ability to empathize, to love. In the late 1970s, when one of my best friends in high school, Stanley Spees, was killed in a freak farming accident, Stanley's dad, came to talk with, with Gilbert. Stanley had played baseball with me at Hedgesville and, and like dad, he had been a pitcher. Mr. Spees was no doubt shouldering the same grief and questions that had occurred for dad all those years ago following Ginger's death. Dad told me that he found himself telling Mr. Spees that he understood at least a measure of his pain, but that maybe it wasn't too much for God to ask to add one more smile to heaven's compliment. The gift of empathy that Dad gave to Mr. Spees that day was an expensive one. It was bought with his own tears earlier in his own life. He empathized, he tried to comfort, and he loved that grieving dad in a way that only someone with firsthand experience at losing a child could do. Sometimes God's plan guides our lives in ways that we wouldn't expect. 
Dad told me when he came back to Carneysville after the injury and following Ginger's death and my birth, he eventually went into teaching, quote, because it was the only job he could find. He loved by doing what he thought he had to do to provide for his family. He took a job in another county and for years and years drove from Shepherdstown to Hedgesville to teach social studies and history and to coach. He couldn't have imagined at that point how many lives that job would enable him to touch or how many people he would love as a result of doing it. To say that the only reason that he went out to, to school and every day after school would coach some kind of competitive sport for the extra money it would bring in would, would be a stretch. It, it, it would not be Elogia. Financial compensation for coaching sports was meager, but he loved it. He loved to play, he loved to compete, he loved to win. No matter the sport, he would always say to his players, the scoreboard's there for a reason, it's not just for decoration. His coaching career regularly included his picking kids up and giving them a ride home if they were playing on one of his teams, but didn't have transportation. In the winter, I rode with him many times up and down back roads that were covered with snow to pick up or drop off a player that needed transportation. He served those people in that way. He loved them. Later in the summers, when he was involved with the Berkeley County Rec Board, he'd do the same thing for some of the young people who were working at the various playgrounds. He, he loved in that way. Maybe, maybe he had seen an example of that someplace. My dad's, my dad's dad, my, my grandfather, Paul E. Miller Sr., also worked as a mail carrier in addition to running the farm. Dad told me that it was well known that at Christmas time, Paul, who, know which, who knew which houses were the ones that were experiencing hard times, would leave candy in the mailbox for the children who had nothing. He loved in that way. Maybe it was that example that caused Dad to buy pairs of sneakers for kids who needed them and were playing, teams, playing on teams that he coached. And then there was another time that he loved. Dad and Carolyn were married in August of 1977, a little less than four years before Shelley and I. Dad told me on more than one occasion, I do love her. Over the next 44 years, that was evidenced in many ways. Friends of mine have said they remember you guys dancing at wedding receptions that you would go to and that they were so impressed. In 2017, we were able to, to take Dad and Carolyn to the homestead to celebrate the coming of the new year and there amidst a crowd that was mostly of another generation, they danced enthusiastically. When the band took a break, a total stranger, very distinguished looking and yet somewhat younger, came up to them and I was, I was close enough to hear him say, we're really glad to see you guys out here. You remember that? In the midst of the ups and downs of life, they danced and loved. And apparently gave other people that they hadn't even met before Hope. It reminds me of a song that Leon, or Leanne Womack did called I Hope You Dance. In it, she says, promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you'll dance. Give heaven above more than just a passing glance. And when you get the choice to sit it out or dance, dance. For 44 years, Dad and Carolyn danced well together. I've asked several people to share Gilbert memories with me that were their favorites. My brother Gary remembers his love for, for fishing. He, he remembered Dad had bought a, 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 his first fishing pole, a bamboo pole, at the Western Auto Store in Shepherdstown. He also remembers the time following his motorcycle accident when he was fishing in the middle of a creek with Dad in a steel bass boat that dad had purchased, and Gary hooked a large bass. 
Well, but while he was sitting in the boat, the bass apparently, you know, started to swim toward the shore and got the line tangled up in some overhanging branches. Normally, that fish would be the one that got away. But when Gary turned around, Gilbert had gone down into the water to untangle the line. The bass, which apparently was a large one, went home with them that day. From a bloodline and ancestry perspective, Chris was Gilbert's first child and my eldest son. Chris remembers when dad's first great-grandchild, William, was visiting dad and Carolyn the summer of William's third birthday. Children being as quick as they are, somehow William slipped and fell into the swimming pool. Dad did not walk on water by any means, and, and he would say that he was never a very good swimmer. But Chris remembers his coming from the other end of the pool in a flash to pull William out of the water that day. He loved him. Dad loved to laugh. Kathy Guest, Charles's oldest daughter and my cousin, said she remembers how he would chuckle. And we all remember how he would often laugh out loud with a shrill hoot when something struck him as being funny. Kathy also re recalled a time when she and her family were living in Raleigh, North Carolina. A, a transition was underway, but Kathy needed a ride from Raleigh back to West Virginia to start college. Dad had purchased a red convertible with part of his baseball bonus money. He drove it to Raleigh and back to enable Kathy to start school on time. Now, by my calculations, that demonstrated at least 12 hours of love on today's roads. Sports metaphors and analogies, they get used a lot because they often mirror the realities of life itself. Hard work and perseverance often make their way into those analogies. You all know that to his readers, the Apostle Paul used the analogy of a competitive runner in both, books of, in both the books of Romans and Hebrews. Speaking of competitive runner, Sally tells the story of how Dad took her along to a track meet and his team was shy one runner. Sally found herself lining up against uniformed sprinters from other schools, clad in black Converse tennis shoes, tie-dyed socks, and a pair of cut-off jeans and a T-shirt. Dad inserted Sally into the race with the following instructions. Now, when the gun goes off, don't be afraid. Right? This is the way you told it to me. Don't be afraid, just don't trip and make it to the finish line. Doesn't make any difference how long it takes you, just finish the race, finish the race. The gun went off and seconds later, Sally was surprised to find that she'd won. Gilbert was del delighted to be laughing at his own miscalculation and I can see it in my mind's eye. And he later took Sally to the state track meet where she won again this time without the tie-dyed socks. He loved to laugh, even when it was at himself. My family's relative proximity enabled both Chris and Josh to remember how dad supported them and loved to go see him play football in high school and college. Hope, our daughter, was impressed by, da by dad's generosity. She also remembers the day she played the lead in a Randolph-Macon theatrical production, and there in the audience were Gilbert and Carolyn. He was as proud of her as he was the boys. He was proud of each and every one of you. Take it from me. I've heard him talk about it too many times. He loved you. He loved all of you. Most people have different sides to their personalities. Dad's intense side was well known, especially when he was competing or coaching. He'd, he'd always emphasize conditioning and practice and preparation to compete. He'd say, if you're gonna play, do the work needed to win. Alan remembered when dad threw batting practice for hours to his little league team in preparation for a game against a crosstown rival. Reportedly, the next day, Gilbert's less, expensive, less experienced little league team beat the crosstown rival by a score of 22 to two? Is that right? Holy mackerel. 
Dad cared about his players. He would, and he'd, he'd defend them energetically during games. Kim remembers that on one occasion, but not the only occasion, after loudly pointing out a missed call at a basketball game, Gilbert was confined to the shower room for the remainder of the game. She also remembers another basketball incident with an irate, when an irate woman was approaching Dad while he was on the bench and Kim was keeping stats. Kim is said to have swung her purse and beamed the would-be attacker. But it was, all, it was all apparently done in good taste as the purse is reported to have been by Ogner. In my high school senior year, our basketball team managed to make it to the West Virginia State semifinal game. After one long road trip from the Eastern Panhandle, when Dad pulled up to the Charleston Civic Center, the facility workers had blocked the rear entrance with a, a dozen of these big orange plastic cones. Dad rolled the window down and questioned the official as to why this was, and the worker told him he couldn't go in that way and tried to direct us away from the facility. Gilbert would have none of it. He proceeded to drive the station wagon in which four of his players were riding over the orange cones, dragging at least one or two of them with us and up to the gym's rear entrance for our practice session. We beat Barrickville the first night. We were deposited in a motel outside of Charleston. This was, this was a pressurized, intense time. No, down, no, no, no downtown explorations for us. No fooling around or late hours would be tolerated. The next day, we came from 11 points down at half to win the title against the Bramwell Millionaires. Dad's voice didn't return for a couple of days, but he loved it. As years went on, Gilbert continued to actively support his loved ones. Harley took note of how Dad and Carolyn both made it a point to attend baseball, basketball, and soccer games when his boys were playing. He invested his life in the lives of his, young, of his loved ones. In younger years, he loved playing, playing baseball, going duck hunting and fishing. In later years, he enjoyed playing golf, at least when he had a good round. An avid fan, Dad loved watching WVU football games, especially when Harley would arrange for a golf cart to deliver him to the gate of Mountaineer Field. And he also occasionally enjoyed p picking winners at the racetrack. He liked iced tea. He liked Ray Charles. And ironically, two of his favorite songs were Georgia and I Can't Stop Loving You. I'm sure the headline writer meant well, but on March 24th, the same day that Dad departed, the Metro News, a West Virginia radio network, published a story on their website with a headline that read, Gilbert Miller has passed away. Again, I'm sure the headline writer meant well, but I believe that, that he was mistaken. The reason they were mistaken is that there's a great deal of difference between passing away and passing on. And at the end of the day, that's the distinction that makes the difference between life and death, eternal life and eternal death. Those of us, and, and I think it probably includes everyone in this room, who have examined the evidence and believe that God exists, understands that nothing is hidden from him. He knows our secrets, he knows our deeds, he knows our thoughts, he knows our attitudes, and when we honestly look at ourselves in the mirror, every one of us knows that we can't measure up to, us, to the sinless standard of a holy God because he's perfect, righteous, just, and holy, and we ain't. We know that no matter how many good things we do and, or what men may say about us, that we can never do enough to save ourselves from the justice that a perfect and powerful creator has a right to expect may be uncomfortable for us to admit, admit it to ourselves, but we're toast unless he does something to save us from the obliteration that we deserve. Fortunately, our God is a loving and merciful Father too, not willing anyone should perish. So he projected himself into human history, 
He took the form of a humble Galilean carpenter named Jesus. He modeled the perfect life and made the only perfect substitutionary sacrifice that could satisfy the demands of perfect justice and demonstrate perfect love at the same time. He died in our place for the sins of the world. But then, after demonstrating the you know, mastery over the laws of nature, gravity, molecular construction, physics, thermodynamics, and the earthly influences of sickness and disease, he then demonstrated mastery of the state of life and death themselves. He returned from the state of corporal death to a state of fleshly and physical life. He overcame death on our behalf so that we could be invited to call on his name to change our thinking and our ways by seeking him and entering into a relationship with him. All this was so that rather than passing away from the presence of God into an eternity of torment and pain, we could pass on into an eternity of wholeness and community with the maker who loves us. And that is the difference between passing away and passing on. The amazing grace of salvation is a gift that's offered to all of us. We've all been given the choice whether to accept that gift or not. And as his ancestors had before him, I believe Dad accepted that gift, and I'm convinced that he has passed on. My dad seemed to me to be bigger than life. I loved him. I, I craved his approval and always wanted to be bigger than life too, just like him. I will miss him in ways that are unique to me and in other ways that are common to us all. So, Maybe some takeaways from Gilbert Miller's life include laugh whenever you can, but with people, not at them. Love whenever you can. And no matter whether you may be in the ninth inning, halftime, or wherever you may be in the race that is your life, persevere and know that the one who formed you and is the God of all our days can enable you to finish the race strong. By God's grace, that's what I believe Dad did. Thank you so much for that lovely tribute and the words about eternal life and the gospel. As we were preparing the service today and I was talking with family members and others, I was really transported back to my own family. My dad was a college professor and dean of men and my son and daughter-in-law are high school teachers. My son is a coach and a PE teacher. So there was so much that I identified with in the life of your family. But one word stuck with me. And we used it in the first hymn that we sang. And that word is recreation. God's recreation of the new day. But we can also pronounce it recreation, can't we? It's the same word. Recreation. Recreation. They mean the same thing. When one has a gift like Gilbert did and like my son has in helping people look at their totality of life, their physical life, their mental life, emotional, spiritual, because health is involved in all of those things, it is such a gift to be able to help other people find fullness of life in all those dimensions. And that is the gift that Gilbert gave to so many people, his family, his friends, and most of all, I think his students. 
The gospel today is that wonderful story about Jesus trying to reassure his friends, his followers, that, um, you know, it's going to be okay, guys. Don't, don't worry about it. Things, things are going to turn out okay. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to prepare a place for you. You know, I'm gonna, I know what's going on, kind of like a coach. They've got the whole picture. They're going to coach, coach you through it. And then Thomas, dear Thomas, you know, says what's on the mind of so many people, and, and luckily he says it. You know, it's all those things about everybody's thinking it, but only one person says it. But we don't know where you're going. How could we know the way? A student's question. How can we know how to do this? And Jesus' reply, and remember that in Greek there's no such word as the, uh, he says, I am way and I am life and I am truth. That, that, that you have these wonderful words that are so dynamic. The way, truth, life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is that bridge as so well expressed by my brother in Christ. Jesus is that bridge that leads us from this life into the recreation of life that is Easter. For those of us in the liturgical churches, this is Holy Week. Palm Sunday was last Sunday, Monday, Thursdays in a couple of days, Good Friday and Easter Day. And ordinarily our church would not be decorated for Easter. But when we have a service to honor the resurrection of those who love Jesus. We fast forward to Easter, and so we have lilies, and we have white. We have the beautiful Paschal candle that shows us the love and the light of Christ coming into the world. We celebrate Easter Day. Every day is Easter Day when we know the Lord, when we have been recreated, when we celebrate the recreation of each new day. Amen. Our next hymn is one of my favorites, and I know a favorite of others. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. All who dwell in deepest sin, my hand will save. I, who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart. Please stand.
in the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, Grant, we beseech thee to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy light and thy peace. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk us yet by faith, that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in thy fatherly care, that casting all their grief on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope, in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Gilbert to thy never-failing love, Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, and remember him according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Grant us with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory and with all thy saints to receive the crown of life which thou dost promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and into earth shall we return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createdst me, saying, Dust thou art, and into dust shalt thou return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting.
Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Gilbert. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us stand and say with great enthusiasm, <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is the wonderful and familiar, familiar Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun.